I've been able to spend several days with this 2022 Nissan Frontier. It is brand new, redesigned, can't wait to show it to you. I'm gonna highlight some of the things that I like and some of the things that I don't like coming right up. Now, if you wanna see more details about this Frontier, not just the short good and bad list, be sure to look in the description below for my full detailed review. Now, starting with my dislikes, in no particular order, none particular order at all, it's the fact that these seats, first of all, they are comfortable, but the fact that these seats don't actually tilt. You can lift the seat up and down, but you can't adjust the tilt on the front of the seat. And this is the top Pro 4X model, and you can't do that at all. There's a part B to this as well with the front seat. Heated seats were standard on the Pro 4X last generation, but they're not standard anymore. You gotta pay extra. They're an optional feature, at least in the US. Probably standard in Canada, but still. I'm surprised they're not standard on this top Pro 4X. Now another dislike is the headlights. Not the fact that these ones look cool, which they do. These are the LED headlights on the top Pro 4X trim, but wait. LED headlights are only standard on this top Pro 4X trim. Otherwise, they're gonna be halogens. And halogen headlights, even though they don't blind oncoming drivers as much, they're still very inferior and less safe compared to LEDs when out on dark roads. Modern day headlights aren't as blinding as people think they are because they have set beam patterns, which is better than what old halogen lights have. There's a defined line of where the light is supposed to cut off. And if it's above that line, somebody lifted the front of their truck, which is usually what happens, or somebody got into an accident and it unleveled their headlights. So LED headlights blinding people is not a big issue anymore unless they're aimed improperly. But you can get these LEDs optional on the SV but those bottom two trims, it doesn't come standard, which I think it should, at least on the SV. Now, another dislike is very, very minor, but for some people, this could make it so that this truck is not really usable or drivable for them because the steering wheel is only tilt adjustable. It's got a little tilt lever down here and you can move it up and down, but it's not telescoping. You can't move it in, you can't move it out. I've gotta say, at my size, I'm five foot nine, it's in a good spot in terms of how far it is, but I always like to pull the steering wheel out, and for shorter drivers, or taller drivers that want it further back or closer, you can adjust it. So that's kind of a disappointment and complete oversight on Nissan's part. All right, one more dislike, which I was kind of expecting to see a little bit of improvements on the interior legroom, but this vehicle is five inches longer, approximately. So it's a little bit bigger on the outside but the inside didn't get you any more legroom. In fact, there's about half an inch less of legroom overall. It's not bad, it's doable, it's okay. I mean, I can sit back there, but since they made the outside a little bit bigger, it would have been nice to see a little bit more space on the inside for people that don't wanna quite jump up to a full-size truck. All right, now onto my likes in no particular order. First thing I'm gonna talk about is the way it drives. So. Nissan brought back the hydraulic steering. So this isn't the super lightweight, overboosted, flimsy kind of false feeling electric power steering. You have hydraulic steering here. It's got some heft to it. So at low speeds, it's actually kind of tough to steer sometimes, but you got really good feedback with the road. And the rest of the driving impressions on here will be in my full review, but I just love the way that it handles, the way that it just the way it feels with this hydraulic steering wheel. Now the next thing that I like, I actually love, is the fact that Nissan gives us this V6. They didn't go to a small turbo, they didn't really change anything, they actually carried this over after they added it to the last generation. It's the 3.8 liter VQ V6. It also has best in class power at 310 horsepower, 281 pound feet of torque, paired with the regular nine speed automatic transmission and it just drives smooth and gives you good power for a mid-sized truck. And another like is that Nissan substantially made this interior so much quieter. I mean, we're going about 50 and wind noise is pretty much non-existent. We actually have double laminated glass up here, which we did not have. And even on a rough textured road where you've got rocks, gravel, anything like that, there's not a lot of noise that gets in here. And I've got decibel ratings in my full review, but it's substantially better than it was in the previous generation. So road noise, cabin noise, excellent for a mid-sized truck. 
Now my next like is gonna have to do with the fact that there's just a lot of storage inside. Let me show you. First, in the door pocket, this bottle holder is massive. I mean, this is built for like those giant Sonic drinks and there's room right here to throw some gloves or even some tools because it's long and deep. In the center console, this wireless charging mat is rubberized, so this would also be good just to set stuff down. You also have a rubber storage mat right there behind the shift lever, so you've got those two little areas. Inside of here, this is actually pretty deep. It's got a lot of total volume to it, so good storage in here. Plus, right above the screen, you've got a rubber lined storage area up there for something that you don't want sliding around. Obviously, we've got a glove box, you know, just a standard size glove box, but wait till you get to the back seat. These door pockets also have good storage. Check out how giant that is. Not just for drinks, but for storing any items. Usually back seat door pockets are tiny. But the other thing is there's under seat storage. So you've got this entire under seat area right here. I believe vehicles that don't have the premium Fender audio system will have storage over on that side too. But I love under seat storage availability and it's a split folding seat, unlike the Ford Ranger, which is just one big folding seat. And just for a little additional, you've got this extra space back here where your jack is, or you could throw some jumper cables possibly. Now my next like is gonna come in the bed of the truck. There's two parts, one main thing, and this is actually a soft opening tailgate now, but I love Nissan's Utilitrack system. So optional tie downs like this are available in pretty much any truck that you can get, but you can move these all the way down that rail. You can pivot them, you can put them on the back of the cab, You've got them on the other side. So you've got the four movable tie downs, which are an option. And Nissan used to give you the ones in the floor. I'm not sure if they still do, but if they still give you the floor mounts, then that's just a home run in terms of being able to tie cargo down. So I love Nissan's Utilitrack system. So those were just a few things that I like and don't like about this 2022 Nissan Frontier. Obviously, every vehicle can improve in certain ways, but I like what Nissan did with this Frontier. It's still refreshingly simple. It still offers a lot. It's got good capability and practicality and does exactly what it's supposed to do for a mid-sized truck. We'll leave your thoughts down below and be sure to check out the full review of this Frontier in the description below.